All right, guys, welcome back to another video of Shaman J. Will. I was having a snack before the review. All right, so here it is, the Redmi Note 5 full review from me. I think I've had this phone for, I don't know, a month or so. And um, I don't know how long I've had it, but I've been using it. And currently I'm using it on Mint Sim. Um, and I've used it on T-Mobile as well, obviously. So normally when I do a review, I start with like design and things like that first. This time I'm gonna start with LTE coverage. Now the phone does get LTE coverage where I live at uh, because of band four. So this, the LTE coverage conversation, just kill it off right now because this phone does work with LTE in the US. What's gonna happen is if you don't have all the bands that T-Mobile has, you're gonna get little spotty coverage. This phone stays on LTE for me because band two and four are the main two bands that T-Mobile have for usage in their area. Uh, and if it doesn't have band 12, you just won't penetrate buildings very well. It, it might drop, drop to 3G or something like that, or HSPA Plus. But to all those people that keep posting, oh, don't buy this phone, it doesn't have LTE for the US, or you keep asking, you guys gotta start watching the videos because pretty much in all these videos, I talk about the coverage of LTE or at some point or another. And this phone does get LTE in the US. It works flawlessly. I haven't had any issues with it where I live at. And you have to determine where you live at. You pull up the bands and do your own research. Uh, and, and that's what you need to do. This phone has full LTE service right now, and I just haven't had any issues with the with the coverage. It may not have band 12, but you don't need band 12, folks. When band 12 didn't exist, you guys just complained about not being able to penetrate hospitals. Same thing I complained about. Band 12, that's normally what it's used for, is to penetrate deep buildings and get coverage inside of there. A lot of you guys are gonna say, oh, it doesn't have band 17 or band 66. You don't need those coverages. Those are just the extended coverages to help get you better service. You really should rely on band two or four. You're not gonna be on all these bands at the same time. And that is how I wanted to start off this review. The phone gets LTE coverage where I live at. I'm in the ATX. Uh, and depending on where you live, almost everybody is riding band four for LTE. I mean, install the application on your phone and see what band you're on right now. You're probably gonna be on band four. You're not gonna be on band 12. Uh, you might be on band two or four. That's just what it is. So the LTE thing, that LTE discussion, the phone gets LTE in the US. It's just that simple. Now, let's move on to design. The design of this phone is absolutely really, really nice. I can really appreciate what they're doing here. The metal metal backing and everything here, and they have to have the plastic on the top and bottom because of the antenna purposes, but the phone is beautiful and it looks pretty good. So it's like, um, it's just a tradition of the Xiaomi phones and pretty much what we used to consider premium phones. Now it's on the pocket-friendly phones, like the metal chassis, the metal design, metal back. That used to be high end. Now people seem to think that glass is a high end feature. I definitely do not prefer glass at this point in the game because I've broken some phones. Um, if you think that this is not a premium feeling phone, I, I can respect that, but I think it's a really premium feeling phone. The design of it is something we've, we've all seen before, the tried and true design of the metal metal chassis. This one, this, this phone actually has a headphone jack and an IR blaster and um, you know it's, it's, it's just a beautiful, a beautiful design. Got the big screen on the phone with the 18 by 9 ratio. It's something that you could appreciate. Um, speaking of the screen, the 5.99 inch display on here uh, is what we'd expect. It's a 1080p display. Excuse me, it's a 2K display. <laughs> man, you guys are killing me with that, man. For you that know what's going on with the 2K discussion, I'm not gonna get into it, but uh, this is a nice, uh, basically a six inch display, 18 by nine ratio. And uh, it's, it's good. I have no complaints about it. Uh, it's it's a display. I mean 1080p is more than enough for a phone even though I would like to see 4k and uh, Quad HD displays on all high-end phones, uh, but this is not considered a high-end phone by many people uh, Because of the processor and the price tag and all those features But having 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs onboard storage a lot of flagships have that um, And some flagships even have the 1080p display, you know, but they don't have a headphone jack or an IR blaster Go figure um, this phone, sub $200, sub $300 is a good purchase for this screen. This screen is absolutely beautiful and no complaints. Um, next on my chopping block is the cameras. Now the cameras is something that I don't understand. I don't understand why I'm running a Snapdragon 636 in here and I'm running a Snapdragon 636 in here. This one, the cameras on here, are the processor can handle, it can handle it. For some reason, they chose to not give it 4K recording 
and they chose to not even give it 1080p at 60 frames per second. I, I don't understand that. Uh, that's the complaint I have about the cameras. There's no 1080p at 60 frames per second, only full HD on, 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 the, on the cameras. And they have a reason for doing that. I don't know what it is, but I really wish they would have given us 4K or at least 1080p at 60 FPS. It just would have made for a better experience because these cameras are actually really, really decent. Um, I, you know, the quality of the cameras to me are really good. It's just no 4K recording and no, um, no 1080p at 60 FPS. Kind of weird. Um, speaker quality on this thing is, yeah, it's a, it's a, a single bottom firing speaker, so it can get loud at about 80 to 100 percent. Other than that, it's not going to impress you too much. Uh, you'll, you'll definitely need to crank it way up. Um, and looking at the bottom of the phone, not a fan of this micro USB. It is fast charging, but I really would like to see Type C on all these phones because I know that it's possible. Um, it's not going to break the bank for them to put Type C on these phones. And I really wish they would do that. So, uh, software experience on here, you get a, you get a stock experience. Um, nothing that's gonna be mind blowing or different, uh, but the experience is gonna come with performance. How the how the UI was how the UI is doing with uh, software and everything, performance and no complaints. Um, you're gonna enjoy this phone if you like the stock Android feel. Uh, there's not a lot of bloatware, if any. It might be a few. It's just their browser on there, but I don't really see. Uh, too much that's gonna make you say oh this is a horrible experience uh, it's a good phone the, the software is really good where another reason where another why, uh, area where this phone shines is the battery life now the battery life on this thing was gonna take you it, it's gonna take you at least some a, a day uh, let's give it bottom line minimum a day it's gonna take you through a day it has to because it can take me through two days so it's gonna take you through at least a day if you're not as heavy user, uh, uh, if I, you're, if you're a heavier user than me, you're still going to get a day. You're going to get long screen on time. You should be able to grab between five to seven screen hours of screen on time with a day and a half of usage or so, because um, the battery is just ridiculously good. And that's how that's this combination. I'm surprised that the 600 series uh, is really good. Uh, the 636, I should say. The 636 processor, it, it handles the battery life really good, and this combination is really good. So, um, you know, not much more to, to say about the phone. I mean, there's not there's the same features from Xiaomi. Um, you know, it's just a basic setup. Uh, this, it's just it's, it, the thing is, I have three or four other phones, five other phones. They're all the same. And I think that's why I'm getting with the redundancy of some companies, uh, and this isn't for Xiaomi. This is just across the board. The redundancy comes. Uh, for me because I'm reviewing and buying all these phones and stuff so um, it's redundant for me however for, for the average consumer who are holding on to their phones you won't even notice you'll just feel like okay unless you're upgrading every two years or every year you might find reasons to upgrade but other than that I mean it's a, it's a solid purchase for sub 300 bucks uh, it's totally worth it I just wish they would have had types I wish they, wish they would have had type C and I wish it would have had um, uh, 4k or at least 1080p recording 60 fps on the cameras that's it folks the xiaomi redmi note 5 it's a win-win it's a good phone i'll see you guys in the next video